Hello IP6. Welcome to our first video lesson of the day. On Friday you get two video lessons. So please make sure that you've already finished the homework for Tuesday's video lesson. So we'll be checking that in a moment. As you can see, I am in school. I'm hoping that you will be in school with me next week. But for now, we're going to continue with the video lessons. And like I said, first we're going to check that workbook page. So make sure you've got your workbook ready and that you've finished Tuesday's homework. Okay, so on Tuesday, we were discussing pronouns in compounds and your homework was workbook page 124. So for that page, section A, First, you needed to decide which pronoun to use, and you also needed to tell me if it was a subject pronoun or an object pronoun. Number one, Pepe and I formed a club to help the elderly. I is a subject pronoun. Number two, we and others do odd jobs. We is a subject pronoun. Number three, Lynn assigns jobs to them and me. Them and me are both object pronouns. Number four, she or Pepe organizes the schedules. She is a subject pronoun. Number five, he and she do many household chores. They are both subject pronouns. Number six, Monday is shopping day for him, her and me. We use the object pronouns after the word for. Number seven, many elderly people call my friends and me. We use me after the verb call and that is an object pronoun. And number eight, they have confidence in them and me. Them and me again are object pronouns. So give yourself a score out of eight for section A please. Section B, there were six mistakes in the paragraph. We needed to find the mistakes and correct them. So Pepe, Lynn, and I had a scare yesterday. Change me to I. We were walking dogs for our elderly friends. That pronoun we is correct. You shouldn't have changed it. Then a stray collie snarled at him and her. So we need object pronouns, him and her not subject pronouns, he and she. Luckily, she and he were able to distract the collie. We change him to he. Usually, the work is fun for them and us. We change they and we to object pronouns, them and us, but today it was not. So give yourselves a score out of six for section B, and a total out of 14. Okay, you've probably seen these words before. Who, whom, and whose. These are also pronouns. They're not pronouns that we've looked at yet, but they are pronouns. And today I'm going to explain how to use them. And I'm just going to tell you now, native speakers, including me, when we're speaking normally, we often don't use whom correctly, and we use who for everything, and we shouldn't. Whom is a, an object pronoun, and I'm going to explain how to use it today. So hopefully, when I go through this, you will understand how to use who, whom, and whose correctly. Okay, so the words who, whom, and whose are different forms of the pronoun who. And we often use them to ask questions. You don't always use them to ask questions, but just for today, and any example I give you in this chapter, it will be about using questions. We use who as a subject pronoun. And if you answer that question, the answer to the word who will be the subject of a sentence. So that's how you can remember it. Who is coming to the party? Who? Who is coming? Pote is coming to the party. Pote would be the subject of that sentence. So that means who is the subject of the question. Who is coming to the party? Pote is the who that we're talking about. Who is like an unidentified person? And when we identify him, that is the subject. Now it's a bit harder using whom. Whom is an object pronoun. 
if we answer the question with whom, the answer will be the object of the sentence. We could also check that we're using whom correctly by turning that question into a statement. So, whom was Tan watching? Or, Tan was watching whom? So, whom was Tan watching is a question, and just to make it a bit easier, Tan was watching whom? So that tells us that Tan is the subject, and whom is the object, even though they're in what you might think is the wrong order. And again, if we answer it, it helps us understand Tan was watching Sky and Nene. Sky and Nene is the object of this sentence. Tan was the subject. Again, for whom is this gift? This gift is for whom? This gift is the subject. Whom is the object? This gift is for Sun. The gift is the subject. Sun is the object. So who is a subject pronoun? Whom is an object pronoun? And like I just said at the beginning of the video, people often use who and whom interchangeably. They, sh they usually just say who. Lots of people would say, who was Tan watching? Who is this gift for? But they would be wrong to do that. You should say whom when it's going to be the object of the sentence. So you may even sometimes catch me or your other native speaking teachers using who incorrectly. So watch out for that. Now, who and whom, it's easy to get them confused. But whose is quite a lot different and should be easy for you to identify it. So whose is a possessive pronoun. So if you hear a question using whose, you can answer it with a possessive noun or a possessive pronoun. Don't confuse whose with whose, W-H-O apostrophe S, because that is a contraction of who is. So, so for example, whose is this pencil? To whom does this pencil belong? So, I think it's Ty's or mine. So I, I can answer Ty's, it belongs to Ty, or possess a pronoun mine, it belongs to me. But whose is used as a possessive pronoun to ask whom something belongs to. Open your textbook to page 291 and answer questions 1 to 8. So you need to read the sentence and decide which word to use. So it might be who or whom. It might be who is, whose or whose possessive pronoun. So you need to think carefully. Now, even though you're just choosing between two words, this exercise, I think, is actually quite difficult. You really need to think carefully. Should it be a subject pronoun? Should it be an object pronoun? Should it be a possessive pronoun? Or should it be who is? So really do think about your answers. So, as usual, if you don't have your textbook, do this on paper. If you do have your textbook, circle the correct answer. Pause the video. Press play when you've finished up to number eight. So please pause now. Okay, have you finished up to number eight? If you have finished, you can keep watching for the answers. Number one, whom did you see at the store? You is the subject, whom is the object? Like if I said, you saw Yuri at the store, you would be the subject and Yuri would be the object. So it's the same when you're asking the question, whom did you see at the store? Number two, Whose groceries are these? So these groceries belong to whom? Number three, who is lo loading the produce? So whose, but who apostrophe s. Who is the person loading the produce? Number four, for whom are you saving these tomatoes? You are saving these tomatoes for whom? Number five, whom will she ask for the crates? She is the subject. Whom is the object? Number six, with whom are you working? You is the subject, whom is the object? Now, number seven, who manages the store for Bobby? So I could say, Bill manages the store for Bobby. And so Bill would be the subject of the answer. So who is the subject of the question? Number eight, whom will you send this bill to? Again, you is the subject. Whom is the object? So, 
give yourselves a score out of 8. I do think that was quite difficult. There were lots of examples where you needed to use whom, even though naturally you might think the answer should be who. So, if you scored 5 or below, I want you to rewind the video to the beginning of the PowerPoint where I started talking about who, whom, and whose. If you got 6 or 7 or 8, you can continue watching and do the next exercise. So look at questions 9 to 16. This time, you need to fill in the blank space with either who, whom, or whose. So, something turned out the light, it would be who turned out the light. Like if I answered Claire turned out the light, then Claire would be the subject of that sentence. So that means that we need a subject pronoun in the question, and the subject pronoun is who. So again, you really need to think carefully about numbers 9 to 16. The best way to do it is to imagine an answer to the question in your head. If you answer the question, think about what word you used as the answer, and then think about was that subject or object or possessive, then that will tell you whether to use who, who, or whose. So, as usual, pause the video, write the answer, and press play when you've finished up to number 16. So please pause now. Okay, have you finished up to number 16? If you are, you can keep watching for the answers. Number 9 is actually a bit tricky. I, I'm happy to give you two answers here. You could say, whom did you like best? Like, you liked whom the best? You liked Tan the best. But you could also say, whose? Maybe two people have made you a cake. Maybe Madge made you a cake, and maybe Chup made you a cake. Whose cake did you like best? So I will accept whose for that. But it should be whom or whose and not who. Number 10, who ordered the fishing pole from this catalogue? You need subject pronoun who. Like if I said, uh, Prook ordered the fishing pole, Prook would be the subject. Number 11, whose book is on the floor? So to whom does the book belong? Number 12, whom should I go the movie with? The answer to that question would be the object, because the subject would be I should go to the movie with. Okay. Number 13, who can answer this question about water pollution? We need a subject pronoun, because the answer would be like, Poopa can answer this question. Number 14, for whom is the gift with the big red bow? The fact that we've got four here makes it easier, because we always use an object pronoun after four. So, the gift with the big red bow is for Nene. Number 15, whom did you see at the gym yesterday? If you answer that question, you would say, I saw Sky at the gym. So I would be the subject, Sky would be the object. So when we ask the question, we need the object pronoun whom. And number 16, to whom are you giving your concert tickets? Again, I am giving my concert tickets to Jing Jing. Okay, so give yourselves a score out of eight for that section. Now I do appreciate that who, whom, and whose is difficult. If you didn't get the best score, don't worry too much, but please do try to remember this. Okay, your homework for this lesson is workbook page 126. As you know, this is the first Friday lesson. Please make sure you finish that workbook page before you watch the second Friday lesson, lesson 120. Okay, this is workbook page 126. Section A is similar to the work we just did. You need to read those five sentences and you need to fill them in with who, who, whose, or whose, who, apostrophe s. Section B, there are five mistakes using pronouns. So there's six sentences, five of them have a mistake. You need to change the mistake to the correct word. Okay, IP6, that is the end of this video. So like I said, please make sure you finish that homework before you watch today's second lesson. Until then, for now, thank you, IP6. Bye-bye.